So just a couple days ago, I released Brandon Carter, Worst of the Fitness Industry. I recommend you all go watch that full video if you haven't, just so you get the full context of what's going on here. But to sum things up, the video was basically about how diets high in saturated fat and cholesterol are bad for human health. It increases risk of chronic diseases, including heart disease, diabetes, and even certain forms of cancer. And obviously, Brandon promoting a ketogenic diet, which is high in saturated fat and cholesterol, it's obviously not ideal for human health. Well, Brandon didn't take these criticisms all too well. At first, he just threw a tantrum in his comments section. People were mentioning that I made a video criticizing his diet, and then he started claiming that I was making baseless assertions, I cherry-picked research. He didn't respond to a single argument I made, which is typical bullshit I'd expect from an idiot like him and he also deleted quite a few comments as well. And then after that, he posted a video on Facebook where he tried to play it off as if he doesn't care that I made a video about him, and he's actually happy that it happened, and I might have an antisocial personality disorder, but I can tell when someone's pissed off. Brandon wouldn't have gone through all this trouble to get his friends and employees to have a pretend party and shoot a video if he wasn't upset. And again, he did not respond to a single criticism I made because what is he gonna do? He's a fucking dishonest idiot who doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about, and all he can do is try to make light of the situation, and he also tried to do some damage control because he actually uploaded a more formal response to his main YouTube channel. For those of you who don't know Brandon Carter, well, just take a look at his About page on his YouTube channel to find out more about him. <laughs> So this party scene goes on for way longer than it should, especially since he already did this joke on his Facebook page the day before, and I get what he's trying to do. He wants to convince everyone that he doesn't feel embarrassed or humiliated well, then Maybe you should just respond to my criticisms, Brandon, instead of going through all this trouble to create a fake party, buy champagne, print out a banner, get balloons and confetti, how about you just try to refute my arguments? If you didn't feel embarrassed, then I don't know why you have to go through all this trouble to try to convince everyone that you're not embarrassed. Save yourself the time and effort, and just attack my arguments rather than doing all this stupid bullshit to try to protect your ego. And how stupid would it look if someone like Stephen Hawking responded to criticism like this? So my theory on black holes has been disproved. Do I look like I give a fuck? Whatever, I'm happy that Leonard Susskind wrote that paper. I'm glad I have become such a big deal that butthurt losers like Leonard take time out of their day to write about me. Clearly I'm doing something right when haters are giving me all this attention. Man, this is a glorious day! Vegan Gains finally made a video about me. I now have ascended to the ranks of the other worst of the fitness industry. You know, this is a very prestigious list, man. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Elliot Hulse, Mike Rashid, Chris Jones, the Hodge Twins, Simeon Panda, and my personal favorite, Gregor Gallagher. <laughs> this is a prestigious list. And for years, I've been wondering, why in the hell am I not on this list? I see all, all the A-list fitness YouTubers and fitness celebrities getting on this list, and, and I'm not, when are you gonna acknowledge me, Richard? Yeah, you forgot to mention Shreds, Doc Testosterone, Mike Chang, Josh Axe, Durian Rider. What you'll notice is only idiots are on this list. Some are more popular than others, but they're all idiots. Clearly, you're not happy that you're on the idiot list, which is why you're going through all this trouble. And just a reminder, we're already over two and a half minutes into this video, and He's yet to respond to a single criticism. I wonder fucking why. I've been wondering why it has taken so long for theoretical physics professor Leonard Susskind to disprove my theories on black holes. He has disproved so many other theories made by some of the greatest theoretical physicists of our time yet he has never disproved one of my theories. 
but today I am so happy that he has finally proven me wrong and I have now made it into the worst of the theoretical physics industry hall of fame. Can't you tell that I am happy about this because of all of the balloons and champagne I am having? I am not upset or humiliated by this in any way. And the day has finally come. You know, this is, first of all, I'd like to thank God. Okay, so you have an imaginary friend that lives in the sky. That explains your very low standard for burden of proof. And Brandon just keeps going on and on and on about, he's so happy that I made it worse to the fitness industry about him. Oh, thank you. Thank you, God, so much for vegan gains. Yeah, yeah, we get it, Brandon. Calm the fuck down. We know you're not angry or upset. Just calm down. We know already. Without y'all showing me support, without y'all actually making progress doing what I say, actually getting results from my training programs, my nutrition programs, and just the free advice I give here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and all the other platforms. You know, Richard, Richard poked a little fun at me because said I was a self-proclaimed or fake fitness expert, but there's actually few people who have more testimonials from people who got results, you know, following my advice than almost anyone I can think of, man. Like Brandon, I never claimed that your advice doesn't get results. I never claimed that people can't grow muscle and lose weight following your advice. I merely demonstrated that the foods you recommend increase risk of chronic disease and are far from ideal for human health. That has nothing to do with muscle growth and weight loss, so what Brandon is doing right now is he's creating straw man arguments. He's attacking imaginary arguments that I never made that he can very easily refute. Great, Brandon. People get results following your programs. It turns out telling people to eat less and move more gets results. That is not a topic of contention. The issue here is that you're recommending people eat foods that are high in saturated fat and cholesterol like meat, dairy, and eggs. These foods have been proven to increase risk of cardiovascular disease, diabetes, and even certain forms of cancer. And instead of trying to refute that argument, you're making it seem like I was telling people that no one can grow muscle and lose weight following your advice? Fuck you, Brandon. You're a dishonest, lying piece of shit. That's why you made it on the worst of the fitness industry list. All these people are idiots and liars, and you're one of them. Congratulations! Why don't you throw another party? And like, I'm, I think I'm elite, and I have evidence to prove that, you know, because people get such good results from following our protocols. All right, so... That was me at about 260, 265. I uh, came across your channel and uh, it worked shockingly well. Brandon, this isn't about me claiming that no one gets results following your programs. Again, getting results is pretty easy. Eating less and moving more will get you results, but some of the results of certain programs won't always be beneficial, like increasing your risk of heart disease from eating a diet high in saturated fat and cholesterol. I just plain don't fucking care if your diet advice results in people looking better. I was arguing that your diet has health consequences. I may not be the best physicist in the world, but I would consider myself a fitness expert as I have thousands of clients who have gotten amazing results following my crystal meth diet. I have more testimonials than anyone else showing that my clients lose a tremendous amount of weight simply by smoking crystal meth. So clearly I am a health and fitness expert because my clients lose weight and get results by smoking crystal meth. On Vegan Gain's Facebook page, he tried to say that I wanted to take the video down or I, I filed a, a copyright claim. I did not do that, Richard. I'm, ha I'm happy you did it, man. I'm promoting the video. Everybody go watch it. I hope it gets a trillion views. Uh, this is what happens. You got to go back to changing the pitch in your videos like you used to do back in the day. Richard, come on, man. You're getting lazy. That, uh, that, that happens automatically. You know, you can see that it, the file, you can see in the image you post that I didn't file the claim. Full screen file the claim. Okay, I'll admit that I made a mistake there. I was so pissed off that I got a copyright claim that I jumped straight to accusing Brandon when it was just his multi-channel network that filed the claim. Uh, the copyright claim is gone now. I got it removed, so it's not an issue anymore. And just a reminder, we're already over five minutes into a 20 minute long video and Brandon has still yet to address a single argument I made. One quarter of his video is already done hasn't refuted a single argument. As far as what he had to say about the ketogenic diet, he said, my studies suck, and his studies are great. Here's the truth about all academic studies. You can find ways to try to discredit any study. And you can also find studies 
to back up almost any position you want to take. Again, Brandon is deliberately misrepresenting my arguments because if he was being entirely truthful, he'd have to admit he's wrong. The studies that Brandon referenced and that I criticized either have a poor study design or he just flat out misinterpreted the findings of the study. For instance, Brandon was trying to claim that ketogenic diets offer a metabolic advantage, thus promoting faster weight loss. However, instead of referencing a metabolic ward experiment, which is performed under tightly controlled conditions, he chose to reference a free living experiment where calories were not kept constant between diet groups. Given that study's design, you cannot claim that ketogenic diets offer a metabolic advantage that promote faster weight loss. What you can do is claim ketogenic diets reduce appetite, making it easier to maintain a caloric deficit. Brandon is trying to suggest that I made baseless assertions and I just said, his studies are no good, mine are better. No, I carefully explained why your studies are flawed and why the interpretations of your studies are flawed, but you're too stupid to refute my arguments, so you just have to try to clumsily dismiss everything I say. Also, a lot of the research that I referenced did not conflict with the findings of the research that Brandon referenced. I referenced research which shows that diets high in saturated fat and cholesterol raise the serum LDL cholesterol in your blood, and if you take a look at the studies that Brandon referenced, it showed that ketogenic diets which are high in saturated fat and cholesterol do not work to lower LDL cholesterol levels even when weight loss occurs. So again, your reading comprehension and critical thinking skills just aren't good enough to understand any of this, which was a point I made in my original video, thank you motorcycle. Uh, you just flat out don't know what you're talking about, you form your opinions based entirely off of your own personal experiences, and then you attempt to support your opinions with research, but you don't know how to interpret the findings of this research. In other words, you're just an idiot. And honestly, how stupid would it sound if someone like Stephen Hawking made this exact same argument? That hater ass bitch Leonard Suskind just said that my studies are shit and his are great. The truth is you can find ways to discredit any study and you can find studies that support any position you want. He can talk shit all he wants but he can't prove anything. So does that sound like something a smart person would say, Brandon? Do you think an expert in anything would try to claim that all research is bullshit and there's no way to prove anything? The fact is, Brandon, all studies have some kind of flaw, but some are more flawed than others, and a reoccurring problem with you is that your reading comprehension and critical thinking skills are so poor, you don't even know what the fuck you're reading! So, again, you have yet to come up with a single valid argument against any of the criticisms I've made against you, and all you're doing is just trying to clumsily dismiss everything I say. So Richard took a handful of the studies I posted, not all of them, just a, you know, a handful, the ones he felt like he can poke the, the most holes in and discredit, and you know, he did what he needed to do. Yeah, uh, Brandon's lying again. So in my worst of the fitness industry video, I criticized this video that Brandon made, Ketogenic Diet Explained, part one of four. So if you look in the description, he has links to the research he referenced. Uh, I skipped a few of them for various reasons. The first link claims that ketogenic diets can lead to weight loss and favorable changes in serum triglycerides and high-density lipoprotein cholesterol. Well, if you click the link, the abstract isn't even available. However, if you search online, you can find the full text, which confused me because why wouldn't you have just linked the full text? And if you read the full text, the authors noted that most studies show ketogenic diets do not lower LDL cholesterol scores, even in a caloric deficit. In fact, a few studies showed that ketogenic diets raise your LDL cholesterol score. And as I mentioned in my video, LDL cholesterol is the only risk factor for atherosclerosis. It is the only risk factor necessary for plaques to form. So focusing on getting your LDL cholesterol score below 70 milligrams per deciliter and your total cholesterol score below 140 milligrams per deciliter is your best chance at preventing heart disease. So ketogenic diets therefore increase risk of heart disease as they have no LDL lowering benefit, but Brandon decided to misinterpret and cherry pick the findings of this review. He only focused on how ketogenic diets tend to increase HDL cholesterol levels, 
without mentioning how they tend to place your LDL cholesterol score at unsafe levels. And I chose not to criticize this review he referenced because the findings were the same as other studies he referenced, and in the interest of time, I wanted to save a few minutes since my video was already 30 minutes long and I thought it would just be pointless to say more of the same shit. He also linked a study which involved low carbohydrate diets and preservation of muscle mass. Well, if you actually read this review, this didn't really involve ketogenic diets. It involved very low carbohydrate diets. And as the author mentions, very low carbohydrate diets tend to be high in protein. And if you ask any expert, including Eric Helms, high protein intakes while dieting reduces muscle loss. I even mentioned this in a previous video I made about gaining muscle while dieting. So overall, I agree with the findings in this review. So why would you expect me to criticize it? I did respond to the next four studies Brandon linked in my worst of the fitness industry video. It's just that the last one I didn't bother criticizing and that's because it involved acne and I just don't care. My video was focusing on health and chronic disease not cosmetic benefits, although acne can be related to diabetes and certain forms of cancer. I already covered cancer and diabetes in my video, so talking about it again would just waste time. So Brandon was trying to claim that I cherry-picked his arguments. I only tried to criticize the studies that I was smart or knowledgeable enough to criticize. Uh, no. I skipped over the first study you linked for the interest of time because the findings were the same as all the other studies you referenced. The second one you linked, I for the most part agreed with the findings, so why would you expect me to criticize that one? And the last one, the last study you linked, uh, it was about acne and it was just off topic, so I just decided to skip that one as well. Uh, so, Brandon, you are an egotistical moron, you have no argument, and you have to bend the truth to protect your ego. A smart person would just admit they're wrong and change their position, but you're an idiot who claims to be an expert. I don't want to try to compete with him at that. I'm not the best at YouTube. He's the best at YouTube this videos, right? I'm not going to out YouTube this video vegan games. What I will do is just show you some of the results from people who uh, followed my ketogenic diet approach. Okay, now Brandon is actually admitting that he can't refute my scientific claims and he's appealing to personal anecdotes that don't even relate to my argument. Brandon, not once did I ever claim that you can't get results following your diet advice. I claimed your diet advice increases risk of chronic disease. So once again, you're attacking an imaginary argument that I never made. Hey, there's no way I can write a scientific paper dissing Leonard Susskind. He's the best at writing scientific dispapers. But what I can do is show you my clients who have gotten amazing results smoking crystal meth. Leonard can reference all the research he wants trying to disprove my theories on black holes. But how is it that my clients are getting results smoking crystal meth if my black hole theories are false? Not only did they get in better shape, but their cholesterol levels improved. My cholesterol levels dropped over 100 points when I started the ketogenic diet, and my good cholesterol, the HDL, actually went up. My blood work came back perfect after one month of doing the ketogenic diet. Brandon, there is no such thing as perfect blood work, so that statement right there proves you have no idea of what you're fucking talking about. And again, you're appealing to personal anecdotes. Now, assuming Brandon isn't lying again, let's say his total cholesterol score dropped by 100 points after following a ketogenic diet. Well, that is an incredibly rare occurrence. The research Brandon himself referenced shows ketogenic diets tend to either maintain or increase LDL cholesterol levels. So even if what you're saying about your own personal experience is true, that's an incredibly rare result and you can't expect other people to get those results. Which is why you shouldn't rely on personal anecdotes to form your opinions. I also want to point out that just because Brandon reduced his cholesterol score significantly, that doesn't mean he isn't still at high risk of cardiovascular disease. The healthy, normal physiological range for LDL cholesterol is between 50 to 70 milligrams per deciliter, and the healthy range for your total cholesterol is between 90 to 140 milligrams per deciliter, but lower is always better. 
Well, in a previous video, Brandon actually shared his cholesterol score. You'll also notice your blood work may come back better. Like I, I had my cholesterol tested before implementing this diet and I had it tested after. And here's one of the things, man, my cholesterol, I, I didn't realize it was very high. Before I started this diet, uh, it was close to 300, which is crazy. And my good cholesterol, my, my HDL was 10, which is almost dangerously low. I, I didn't even know it because I felt fine. Um, so it was a good thing I had this test done. But when I did the ketogenic diet, a few months into it, my HDL had increased to about uh, 65 and my total cholesterol cut in, in half almost. It was around 160. So it's actually good for your heart and your cholesterol levels. There are a lot of studies to corroborate that. So his total cholesterol score is around 160 milligrams per deciliter, which is 20 points above the healthy limit of 140, still putting him at high risk for cardiovascular disease. He also didn't mention his LDL cholesterol score, which I'd also imagine is well above the healthy limit of 70 milligrams per deciliter. So Brandon, this is just you not understanding the medical science and making an assumption based off of personal experience. Yet you still call yourself an expert. An expert of what exactly? Just because you can tell people to eat less and move more and they end up losing weight and gaining muscle, that doesn't mean you're an expert in cardiology. Now Richard says that if I went vegan, I get similar results. No, once again, you're lying. I never said if you went vegan, you'd get similar results. I said if you went vegan, you would have a significant reduction to your LDL cholesterol score. And Brandon, since you don't like the idea of having to read medical texts to verify the validity of your statements, why don't you go on a vegan diet for a couple weeks and see what happens to your cholesterol score? You're fine with doing these stupid steak and egg diet experiments, well, why not do a vegan diet experiment? And I can guarantee you that if you go on a vegan diet, even if it's only for a couple weeks, your cholesterol score will drop significantly. So Brandon, like I said before, if you actually believe that diets high in saturated fat and cholesterol don't raise your LDL cholesterol score, then put your money where your mouth is. Go on a vegan diet. All you have to do is follow a vegan diet for two weeks that's free of cholesterol and low in saturated fat and watch what happens to your cholesterol score. I can guarantee you it will drop significantly. And I don't dispute that. I don't dispute that. I think veganism has a ton of health benefits. It's a, one of the healthiest diets you can do, right? Not only that, it's definitely more ethical. I think vegans definitely have the high road as far as uh, ethics are concerned. And also environmentally, like, you know, eating animals and animal products is very, very harsh on the environment. Uh, Richard and the other vegans are all 100% correct about that. However, I'm never gonna do that. I'm never gonna go vegan, I just know I'm not. Uh, and it's not because I'm closed-minded, it's just because I'm, I don't, I'm just not as good of a person. You know, maybe, you know, maybe Richard's a better person than me, or maybe vegans are just a better person than me, maybe I'm just selfish. Okay, so you admit to being a selfish piece of shit. Yeah, vegan diets are healthier, more ethical, more environmentally friendly. Nah, I could never do that. I don't care that I'm torturing and killing animals. Well, at least you admit to being a piece of shit. Usually I have to debate people, and then even after all that, they still don't admit to being pieces of shit. Uh, still, Brandon, I don't see why you can't just try a vegan diet for a couple weeks just as an experiment to see what would happen to your cholesterol score. I think the real reason you wouldn't do it is because you know if you went on a vegan diet for a couple weeks and uh, your cholesterol score would reduce, that would prove I'm right. But credit where credit's due, you did manage to say one truthful thing in this video. You are a selfish piece of shit. So veganism is great for your health, but guess what, man? My blood work shows the ketogenic diet is good for your health as well. And there's a, there's a lot of studies that show that, man. Like no, your blood work shows that you're still at high risk for heart disease. Again, you just don't know what the fuck you're talking about and you keep repeating the same retarded arguments that I've already refuted. So you can read Cholesterol Clarity by Jimmy Moore and Dr. Eric Westman. In that book, they talk about a lot about cholesterol levels and how uh, ingesting cholesterol affects your cholesterol levels or doesn't, you know, I know vegan gangs took issue with that, but you know, these, you know, there are doctors who have written whole books about this. So just because a doctor wrote a book, that doesn't mean the information in that book is accurate or reliable. Uh, first of all, this book that Brandon's recommending, Cholesterol Clarity, it was co-authored by Jimmy Moore. Jimmy Moore is a fat fuck. He's not a doctor, he's not even a dietitian. He's just a random fat fuck. So why would a medical doctor want to co-write a book with someone 
who has absolutely no credentials and he's just a fucking nobody. Doesn't that seem a bit fishy to you? Dr. Eric C. Westman is also not a cardiologist. He does not specialize in heart disease. His expertise is in lifestyle treatment for obesity, diabetes, and tobacco dependence. It's as if you think that if you find one medical doctor who supports your opinions, that somehow means that the majority of the scientific community agrees with that one doctor's opinion? The president of the American College of Cardiology, Dr. Kim A. Williams, is a vegan himself, and he recommends a low-fat whole foods vegan diet for the prevention and treatment of cardiovascular disease. The editor-in-chief of the American Journal of Cardiology, Dr. William C. Roberts, has also stated that dietary cholesterol is the cause of atherosclerosis. So how is it that Eric C. Westman knows more about cardiology and cholesterol and how it affects heart health than two of the best heart disease experts in the world? Do you think this stupid fucking book, Cholesterol Clarity, is supported by the majority of actual heart disease experts? I'm Dr. Kim Allen Williams, and I'm currently the president of the American College of Cardiology and chief of cardiology at Rush University in Chicago. Uh, I am a plant-based nutrition cardiologist. Uh, there are a handful of us and a growing number um, as people recognize that there's enough data out there to suggest that uh, heart disease is largely uh, an epidem epidemic that is due to food. My suspicion is that, you know, based on clinical experience, not randomized trials, uh, which would be better, uh, is that diet probably is, a, is the more important of the two, just because uh, we see a lot of um, uh, exercising, working out, particularly basketball players and football players that have had an athletic life uh, and then they die in their 50s uh, because the diet has been so bad. You know, the diet that they're actually using to build up muscle actually works for that purpose, but it also develops plaque. Uh, there's no question uh, if one has a very narrowed coronary artery and one's uh, total cholesterol is, let's say, 300, or the LDL is 150, and one gets that LDL down to 50 or 60, uh, that lipid portion of the atherosclerotic plaque tends to disappear. So that lumen, the lumen, the space where blood flows through, uh, can open up. And again, theoretically, if it's less than 75% cross-sectional area narrowing, flow should be uh, as if there was no plaque at all. If all of the doctors in these uh, heart institutes uh, preach plant uh, uh, diets and eliminate the meat and so on, uh, or flesh, uh, the, these um, uh, cardiovascular centers uh, couldn't make it financially. They just couldn't do it. Also, Dr. Codwell Esselstein of the Cleveland Clinic has his own published research where he was able to reverse coronary heart disease in his patients with a low-fat whole foods vegan diet intervention. Can you show me just one fucking study where coronary artery disease was reversed with a ketogenic diet or just any low-carbohydrate diet? No, of course you can't, because these low-carbohydrate foods that are high in saturated fat and cholesterol cause heart disease, you fucking moron. You should also try out The Cholesterol Myth. It's a great book by Drs. Johnny Bauman and Dr. Steven Sinatra. That book is one of the books I read when I found out my cholesterol was high, and it kind of steered me towards the ketogenic diet. Okay, the second book that Brandon's recommending is absolute bullshit. The first author, Johnny Bowden, is a well-known fraud. He claims to have a PhD, which is a lie. He has a fake degree from a fake college, which is essentially a diploma mill, and it recently closed down. You can find this out from a quick Google search. The guy won't even mention where he went to school on his own fucking website, so that's a great start. The lead author is a well-known fraud who has no education, and he's claiming that reducing your cholesterol score won't prevent heart disease, even though we have study after study after study showing cholesterol has a direct linear relationship with heart disease. The second author is Dr. Steven Sinatra, who actually turns out to be a board-certified cardiologist. But why would a board-certified cardiologist work with a well-known fraud? Well, it's because he's a fraud himself. On his website, you'll see that he calls himself America's number one 
integrative cardiologist. Integrative is basically code for bullshit. People who claim to practice integrative medicine or integrated health and healing, uh, they typically recommend horse shit like detoxing. Conductors. Conductors. They have the highest longevity of any profession in the world. They live into the 90s all the time. What are they doing? Well, they love their music. They're working with their arms. They're nurturing the heart. They're also de detoxing the thoracic duct, you know? Now, there's a great arm exercise you can do. I would do it, but I'm running. I, I, I got to get to my talk. But if you, if you do this a couple hundred times a day, you know, and you, and you want to do it, you know, mix it up with a little chi, you know, bring the chi back to you. That's a great mechanism to detox the body because you're detoxing the thoracic duct. I call it the arm swing. So that was just a clip of Dr. Steven Sinatra claiming that you can prevent heart disease and live well into your 90s just by flapping your arms around. It helps detox your body. And this is the guy who co-wrote the book, uh, The Great Cholesterol Myth. And if you look at his website, he also sells plenty of supplements, which he claims helps to prevent against heart disease. Do you also think uh, his supplements work, Brandon? Like you recommend the guy's book. Do you also recommend his supplements? So who do you think is uh, more trustworthy, Brandon, frauds, or some of the most reputable and well-respected heart disease experts in the entire world? And Brandon, you act as if these books have new information that I've never discussed. There is nothing in these books that I haven't already refuted. Hundreds of metabolic ward experiments have already proven that dietary saturated fat and cholesterol raises the serum cholesterol in your blood, and study after study after study has shown there is a direct link between serum cholesterol and heart disease risk. So in other words, if I were to cut the skin off of your bald fucking head, put it in a pan, fry it in butter and eat it, that would raise my serum cholesterol score. But luckily for you, I'm interested in living long. And telling people to read a couple bullshit books written by frauds doesn't disprove that fact. So Brandon, you're wrong about cholesterol and you know it. You won't even try a vegan diet for a couple weeks because you know that would lower your cholesterol scores to safe physiologically normal levels. Isn't that fucked up? You want to harm animals, harm the environment, and harm your own health just so you won't have to admit you're wrong. But at least you admit to being a piece of shit. Yo, 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 my favorite part is when you say, your book's only 70 pages. Branded? Yeah, I wanted to keep it concise, you know? Uh, if you can't explain something simple, if you can't explain something in a simple way, then you don't really know it that well. So I just wanted to keep it short and concise so it was easy for people to digest. No, Brandon, you just don't have much to say and you hardly know anything and hopefully your viewers figure that out before your diet advice gives them heart disease, diabetes, or cancer. Speaking of which, why didn't you address any of the claims I made about how your diet increases risk of diabetes or cancer? Funny how you claim that I cherry pick your studies and your arguments that I can easily poke holes through when you're doing that exact same thing to me. So Brandon's video goes on for about another seven minutes, but there's no point in watching the rest because it's just the same recycled bullshit arguments he already used. Uh, he just shows his clients that got results following his programs, which has nothing to do with my argument in the first place. So uh, thanks, Brandon, for proving to everyone that you're a stupid, selfish, dishonest piece of shit, but at least you're honest about it. And uh, if you like these kind of videos, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon. I have some funding perks that some of you may find interesting. And as always, keep making those vegan gains. Beef, what a relief. When will this poisonous product cease? This is another public service announcement. You can believe it or you can doubt it. Let us begin now with the cow, the way it gets to your plate and how.